Welcome to the Inspired Action Podcast. This is where we have motivational, inspiring conversations and interviews that we hope you'll enjoy listening to. If you're interested in creating more balance in your life, understanding your five element energetic nature, finding the path of greatest ease, or releasing the baggage of this lifetime and discovering ancient alchemy that can help you fly in your life. Join us and other inspired actioneers on this alchemical transformational journey. Welcome to the Inspired Action Podcast. My name is Jay and this is Pod 58 and I'm here with my co-host Lita Herman. Welcome back Inspired Actioneers. Woohoo! We're really enjoying our podcast series which we're calling Happy on the Way to Happiness. Doesn't that just sound happy? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about what we did yesterday. Do you want to do it? Yes. All right. We talked a little bit about yes, you know, how much we, fun we had yesterday so I thought we could share it with everybody. Sure. We hiked what's called the Seven Sisters Trail in Hadley, Mass and it was was very spontaneous and last minute. We had planned on working on the podcast uh, yesterday, but instead the weather was perfect. It was like a 10 out of a 10. And we just was like, oh, we're outside. And it was, the breeze was blowing, the sun was shining. And we're like, okay, how about we practice what we preach? Connect with nature, be spontaneous. And guess what? Have fun. <laughs> so, so we just said, let's go outside and have some fun. It's, it really is so freeing. You know, that mountain we hiked is called Mount Holyoke and it has a long tradition of people taking the day off from work and climbing which it. Which I did not know until you told me this story. Yeah. Mount Holyoke College, which I attended for my first two years of college, has a tradition where the president announces on some random, beautiful fall day. Thank God it wasn't yesterday because yeah, we didn't right. see anybody. We were like completely <laughs> <laughs> Zero, Zero people. Zero people. But anyway, so that's called Mountain Day. And all the students are supposed to put down their pens and pencils and typewriters and now computers, because this was, you know, from the 1800s or something like that, to stop working and go enjoy the beautiful day on the nearby Mount Holyoke. Yeah, it was very challenging. And, you know, that's basically what we just did. We just said we kind of played hooky. Um, and we didn't really plan it. We just kind of got out there, experienced nature, the sights, the sounds, the great weather. We saw some nature spirits. It was well inspiring. <laughs> yeah, little fairies, and little gnomies. Yes. <laughs> and now we're back at the podcast. And you know what? I have like a renewed vitality. Yes. And you know, it makes me wonder if more businesses and corporations were trying to put their employees first, they might consider doing something similar. I mean, giving employees a break to breathe fresh air and stop thinking for a bit. I think it makes them more hopeful, more excited about what they're doing. Maybe a they, little more creative. Yeah, creative when they go back to work. Yeah, you know, that's just our little suggestions in the world. That's why I wanted to bring it up. And I think it ties in well with our topic for today, which is what we're calling the virtue of courage. So having courage to do what's good for you, even when society is telling you something different, like go to work. Yes. So take the day off, <laughs> so take go have fun. It takes courage to do that. Yeah. And you can tell everyone Lita and Jay said to go, go do oh, that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Blame the Inspired Action Podcast. <laughs> yes. Blame us. Okay. So if you need to get outside on a gorgeous day, really, truly, what's stopping you? Is it your boss? Is it your family? Is it money? Is it your teachers if you're in school? I mean, how can you make the time for yourself to do something that's really going to help you feel great. Yeah. It also could be, I feel guilty. I feel irresponsible. I feel like I, you know, would let people down yeah. if I put Maybe myself first. Maybe it's you and not all those other people yeah. that's making it difficult yeah. to do I, I do it. To just go out and do stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I do think a lot of bosses are going to be mad if all the all of a sudden, everyone went called in healthy or sick for the day to go hiking on the same day. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be mad at Inspired Action yeah. Podcast. <laughs> hey, as long as they're listening, right? Yeah, that's great. Well, I do think that if you start to think about how your actions are, uh, are they serving you? Are they serving your family? Are they serving those around you? But can you still put yourself first? Yes. Now, speaking of which, let's remind everyone about we have a new podcast segment we wanted to make sure everyone knows. And it's Five called Five Element Fridays. Five Element Fridays. And it's, it's a just, lot of fun. Everyone's yeah. kind of digging it. We're having a good time. So if you haven't checked it out, it's right here in the feed. You just look around wherever you found this one. And you can go listen to last week's right now. It was on the Earth Element. So you can go listen to that right now. We'll wait. Go ahead. We'll wait. Yeah.
Do, yeah. do, do, do. Okay, are we back yet? Yes, we are back. <laughs> it was a quick segment. <laughs> We're back. Woo, just okay. like that. You know, um, and if you listen to this podcast and you like it, please take a second to do a rate and review, even a subscribe if you want. You don't want to miss a show or one of the Five Element Fridays. It really helps us. You know, it really helps other people find the show. That's what it's about. Yes. And we also want to remind you, we have a Facebook group, we have an Instagram page, and we encourage everyone to send your ideas, your suggestions, your questions. We love your feedback. And we really want to engage you in this podcast as much as possible. Yeah. And I think that I will, right after um, we're done with this podcast, I will go post a picture of us from yesterday hiking. Yes. But we do love to hear from you. And hey, we just got an email back from someone in Denmark who got her Inspired Action t-shirt. And she said, it was cool. Yeah, what a compliment. Someone in Denmark thinks our t-shirts are cool. <laughs> yeah, so thank you, Denmark, and thank you to all the listeners out there, wherever you are. And, you know, I think that we just love sending out the t-shirts and different little swag things. So hopefully everyone loves what they get. And just send us questions and be part of the show, and we will... Send you a t-shirt. Send you a t-shirt. <laughs> all right, so Lita, are you ready to get back to our topic today? Yes. That's courage. Courage. So in our last podcast, we talked about how in Chinese philosophy, there are two sets of virtues. One that society gives to us as we're growing up as children. Yes, and those are benevolence, morality, social compliance, loyalty, and trust. Society gives these virtues to us, and this throughout the world, pretty much, at an early age through parenting and schooling and just things we just really can't escape them. They're everywhere. Yes, and you and if you haven't heard Pod 57, go back and check those out. We explain all of them in detail. And today, we're going to introduce you to the second set of virtues from Taoism, which we believe is key to your individual happiness. Yes, and that's what we're talking about today. So that's courage, authority, gratitude, forgiveness, and acceptance. Yes, and these new virtues, they don't come easily because it's about putting yourself first even though there are all these things in our lives pulling on us all the time. Yeah, making us feel guilty, getting us to do things we really don't want to do, maybe spending time away from our family. We could get frustrated, angry, depressed, and even like apathetic. Yeah, and you don't go on mountain day and climb a mountain, no. mountain because of all that. So we all experience this. It's the human condition. Any human living in society is experiencing some amount of this. It is typically a big cause of why we're unhappy. But as we get older and we start to evolve through our lives, we start to realize this. You know, like it's a, it just happens. And then some of us have what we call a midlife crisis, but I prefer a midlife transition. Yes, I think midlife transition because really everyone should go through this. But, you know, one of the symptoms that people often joke about is, you know, you go do crazy things like, you know, I mean, you you just suddenly go out and buy yourself a, you know, convertible red Porsche or something like that. And yeah, or a big giant truck or sports car, or maybe you just run out and join the Peace Corps and just change your entire life and move on and do crazy things. Those are the crisis, I think. Yes. You know, I think that if you transition and you can maybe see where along your road of life you turned... Yes. Where did you get lost? Yes. I mean, the midlife transition, it's really an evaluation of what were your goals and your dreams. And now you're doing something that maybe you don't want to do. So, you know, we go out and do these things because we can, and it's something for ourselves. It's it's not for anyone else. Yeah. And that feels good. And that's usually an extreme example, like we said, those things about how people have restricted themselves for so long and they just are not doing it, then they kind of go crazy and doing this stuff, eh, it kind of gets out of whack. And then it's almost like we have a we have it backwards in society. Yeah. We're supposed to be taking care of ourselves first. Yes. And in a weird way, by doing those crazy things, it's like they're trying to prove to themselves that they're worth it. Yeah. And it's almost like we have it backwards, like you said. Yeah, because, you know, the it could, if you think about, you know, as you go through your life, let's just say 45 to 50 is the normal-ish midlife transition, crisis, whatever you want to call it. Think about you're only halfway through, maybe even a third of the way through. No. Okay, so yeah. what are you going to do? It's Especially not Especially if you're an alchemist and That's you're right. going to live forever. That's right, you're going to live a long time. But, you know, like people are like starting to think it's on the, you know, like, oh, my life is over. What am I going to do now to fix it? I don't know. I think you have a choice. I think you choose what you want to do. It's not what your parents are telling you what to do. It's not what you did as a child. It's what you get to choose to do for the rest of of this period in your life. Yes. So today we're going to talk about what if you had the courage to live within society, but in a way you're putting yourself 
selfishly, and I'm doing air quotes, selfishly. (laughs) She's doing air quotes. (laughs) Much of the time, while still upholding the responsibilities that you choose to have in your life. I just said about choosing. Yeah. Because that's not what everyone else wants you to do. What do you want to do? Yeah, you think you have to do what your kids want you to do, what your boss wants you to do, what your friends think you should do, what your mentors thought you should do. Teachers, siblings. You know, we have the app inspired action app we have that what do i really want meditation that's the one they need to listen to for this yes and we forgot to remind people that uh we have an app in the app store and google play with some really cool meditations and in fact we will shortly post a new meditation that's related to this very topic the courage virtue we will (laughs) yes and what are we going to call that Uh, Something about courage. (laughs) I haven't written it yet, but it's coming. It's coming soon, but definitely what do I really want meditation? That would be a good place to start. That's just fantastic. So Lita, would you say the courage virtue is really the courage to be your authentic self? Absolutely. And most of us have a lot of fear about being who we truly are because we're afraid of being judged, criticized, or worse, not belonging, and even being cast out for being different. You know, we all struggle with these these thoughts and these challenges in our lives. Our souls have longings. You know, whether if we talk about this from the five element perspective, Lita, yes. let's talk about this for a little bit. If you're wood, you know, we long to let ourselves be the best we can be without holding back. Yeah, because wood people are so terrified that they'll be intimidating. That's what they get accused of all the time. And so then they hold back. And that's the timidity of you of the of the wood because they're afraid right. that they're too much so it's a judgment they're afraid of judgment judgment or maybe yeah th- yeah totally almost. they're afraid of judgment they hate it they don't want to be criticized and so in this weird way they just Do aren't nothing they're not being courageous to be their full self yeah 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 i think that's fantastic so if we look at it from fire and they're longing for love Yes. So they long for love. They want to be loved. They want to be loving. And they're so afraid, again, of judgment or criticism and that people aren't going to love them or like them. So what do they do? So then they they end up shutting their own hearts and maybe even being cold. And they're not... Which is the opposite of what they want. Same with the wood. Same with all of these as we go through them. Yeah. Yeah. And they're not pursuing like individual relationships that they normally would because they're afraid. And also that could also uh, go into the passion. They're Mm -hmm. afraid to have passions. They're afraid to really unleash the passion of what they're interested in or what they love to do because society might say no. Yes. We talk about that a lot. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. All right. So if you're earth and they long for belonging and community, where can that get in trouble? Yeah. So it, this is, this is probably the most the best example of where courage really fails. Because if you want to belong and you want community, which is what really makes earth people feel fantastic, then you're going to be subject to what the, those people believe. And if they are telling you, you should do it this way and you should do it that way, but your, your soul longs to do what you want to do, then this, you have this juxtaposition of, I want to fit in and yet I want to be myself. We talked about the social compliance. Yeah. That was, that was like huge. That was huge. And so, you know, it's really hard to be your courageous self and still fit into the community. So let's go to the next one. So if you're metal and you long for connection with all that is, how can that get into a little bit of trouble? Or how about it goes a little astray? Yeah. So metal really wants to, you know, the the fundamental thing they're longing for is this connection, not only with people, but with sort of a universal connection. And, you know, this is definitely something where society comes in and says, you know, come on, start, stop being so, you know, diffuse, get more focused. And, and, you know, it's not so important to the rest of society, this, this level of connection. Yeah. That's and, a challenge too. And so they're very challenged on that level to be who they really are. They may not have that courage to stand up yeah. and do that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So water, they long for independence, a sense of doing something that matters to others. Yeah. So waters are very independent. They like to do their own thing, but they also want to feel like they matter in society. And so they really, 
love to have a, a strong career or be very wise. I mean, those are the palaces associated with water. And so sometimes that really gets hung up because they're trying so hard to get approval yeah. of society, like doing a career that people value instead of doing the career that they want, that their soul is longing for. Yeah, they, they, would, they might have been told by someone that it doesn't really matter if you're an artist or it doesn't really matter if you're anything, what they really have that passion for. So they go do something else. Yeah. And so, you know, we talk about midlife transition. And I was thinking about how when, you know, a college student graduates from college, it's so common that they have a goal and a dream and they just set out to do that. And then reality sets in (laughs) and they have to pay the rent and their parents aren't paying anymore. And they take some job that they don't want. Society says it's time to step up and fit in yeah. and you have to now make money yeah. to, to support a lifestyle. And to have the courage to do what you want in that situation, each of us has our own particular way that longing comes about. And the question is, can we face our fears and dare to be who we want to be? Like Brene Brown's quote, vulnerability is having the courage to show up and be seen when we have no control over the outcome. Yeah, I love her. She's such and just an amazing source of inspiration for so many people. Yeah. You know, There's a big clue in this for everyone. If you do muster up the courage to be or do what you want to be or do, you can choose to do that entirely for yourself. And guess what? You don't have to do it for the people around you. Good point. And if you're wood and you just want to be great, do you need the people around you to see your greatness? No. No. Only you need to see it and acknowledge that you're being great and doing great. So partially the fear and often the reasons why we don't do it is because we're afraid of judgment or that people won't notice us and then we don't go ahead and do it. Yeah, you know, I know we're kind of talking about the elements now, but really, you know, this can be for any of the elements. It's about how you feel about yourself and what's that courage about for you? How can you have the courage to satisfy your own soul's longing and not be dependent? And I keep saying on everyone else around you. Right. What do you really want? What is your soul really longing for? Yes, because the virtue of courage is actually associated with the wood element. So this is a big one for all you wood listeners. The opposite of courage for wood people isn't fear, it's timidity. It's holding back your awesomeness for fear of being too much. And woods, you know, they're supposed to be the leaders in society. I think that when they're on track, that's exactly what they're doing. And then maybe they have this transition, like maybe they're not leading or doing what they want. Maybe they've taken a a different path or a different role. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, basically we're pack mentality animals. We like to take care of our pack. We like to take care of our our group of people. Yeah. Yeah. It's really hard to break free from having to save the members of our pack who might be not as strong or capable to do to need to do what they need to do. Yeah. And so then the wood people hold themselves back so they don't outshine the rest of the group. And then guess what? They're frustrated. They're unhappy. They're unsatisfied. Mm -hmm. They're just not living the life they're supposed to be living. Now, the other thing that we wanted to just express is that courage is, you know, in direct relationship to the other virtue of wood, which is benevolence. Yes. And... One of the reasons it's so hard for wood people to really courageously be themselves is that they're very kind and they want to take care of people. They want to make sure that people who are um, having difficulties in the world maybe can't stand up for themselves. They want to go fight the fight for them. And, you know, so they're... Maybe not fight the fight for themselves. Yeah, so they might not do it for themselves. And that's a virtue that society taught the wood people, that it's good to be kind, that it's good to fight uh, the good fight for people who don't have something or can't get what they want. It goes back with fairness. Yeah. Benevolence, yep. Fairness. And so to have the courage to, despite these things happening in the world, still do what you want to do, that's tough for wood people. Yeah. And also you can even take that to the extreme where they almost do that too much. Yeah. So they have to come back and find that yeah. that middle ground yes. that really serves both the individual and society. Exactly. And find the win-win. Yeah.
all of the virtues we're going to be talking about, you know, courage is the first one, all of them, they start with courage. It's the starting place for beginning to live for ourselves. So we're going to be explaining these virtues in the next five podcasts and that they're really about truly loving yourself so much that you can fully be your authentic self in the world. And each of us has to find, for example, the wood in ourselves, the courage to shine and stand out and be seen on some level. Yeah, and you know, it, everyone has wood in there somewhere, okay? Yeah. That's whatever your stack up is. So you stop holding back for everyone else's sake. Yes, and it can feel really impossible if you feel responsible for everyone around you or you're terrified of being seen. There's a lot of tentacles that can be holding back your courage. Yeah, so if you haven't listened to the tentacles, go back a couple podcasts and get caught up on that too. But I think one of the reasons these virtues are so important to me is because some and society, because sometimes we have a morass of tentacles around our heart and we don't know how to break free. We want to, we know we should be doing something else. Else, we just don't have that courage to t- start to take a look and, and see where maybe we could make some changes in our lives. And you could start with small changes. You don't have to just, you know, run off and join the Peace Corps like we were just saying. Yes. You know, you could start to practice these virtues just a little bit. And then you could start to free things up and give yourself permission to be yourself first. Yeah. See what that feels like. See what that looks like. Try it on a little bit selfishness is actually not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It means you're taking care of yourself before the rest. Yeah. And most people don't realize that I've, you know, I've had to learn this lesson, especially because I'm a a wood person, a wood caretaker. Everyone around me benefits when I get the best version of me. If I'm constantly holding back, if I'm constantly like questioning my happiness or frustration, am I happy? Am I not happy? Then I'm not able to help everyone around me as much as I possibly can, because I'm always in the, in the lack. Yes. And it's your willingness to be the full awesomeness of you that makes everyone around you feel inspired and motivated to be the best they can be. So we all win. That's the wood way. Yeah, I guess that's the win-win. We always talk about the wood, (laughs) win-win. It's perfect for everyone. And it's, I don't think of it as being selfish. I do think of it as, you know, in service to those around us. Yes. And so for homework for our inspired actioneers, as usual, it's about watching yourself initially. Yeah. Do you hold yourself back? And for, you can even go, first of all, are you happy or are you unhappy? Yeah. Okay. You might, that's a difference between happy and unhappy because you'd be like, oh, I'm happy. Then you stop poking around a little bit and maybe guess what? You're not happy. You're unhappy. There's a difference. So think about that. You know, so what are the circumstances that cause you to be holding yourself back or maybe not being happy or frustrated or angry or apathetic? Look at all of them. Take a little time and look at what you're doing in your life. How do you feel about it? What would it be like to allow yourself to be seen and stand out? And remember, courage doesn't mean a lack of fear. I explain this to people all the time. It means doing something even though you're afraid, mustering the courage despite the fear. Yes. So after you spend a bit of time watching these circumstances where your potential lack of courage is coming up, try taking some very small steps towards being courageous. Yeah. And ask yourself, what is your soul really longing for? And what are some of the baby steps that could maybe put you on that path? Doesn't mean you have to alienate everyone around you. Doesn't have to mean you have to run off in the middle of the night. You could take baby steps, but start to see what brings you happiness, what brings you fun, what brings you a sense of joy accomplishment in your life. Yes. And I believe these virtues, even though they're so individualistic and they're prioritizing you over the rest of society, I believe you can achieve these and still be a good citizen of of society. Absolutely. Absolutely. The win-win means everyone wins. Yes. So tap into your wood, have some courage, stand tall, be proud. And you know what? Have courage to be happy on the way to happiness. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> happy trails to you until we meet again. You've been listening to the Inspired Action Podcast, and you've reached the end. Woohoo! Why not celebrate a little bit and click that subscribe button right there. We love having you with us on this journey and we want it to continue. You can also rate and review this podcast. And if you have already, thank you so much. We read all reviews and your reviews help other people find this podcast as well. 
You can also be a part of this podcast yourself by submitting a voice recording message and emailing it to us at Lita at Inspired Action Podcast.com or Jay at Inspired Action Podcast.com. And if you want, you can join our Facebook group or follow us on Instagram. Join us next week for another Inspired Action Conversation. And thank you for listening. Thanks for listening and remember to hug the dog.